Hello, in this video, I'm going to be going through the starred problems in the Unit 6 section of your final review packet. Unit 6 is all about polynomials, and the first thing we're going to review is how to add and subtract polynomials. When you add polynomials, you want to combine like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variable and the same exponent. Then you'll line the terms up vertically and in standard form to help you do this. Standard form is a form of a polynomial where you write the terms in order from the biggest to the smallest exponent. When we subtract polynomials, we'll change them to addition by distributing a negative one to the second polynomial. In our first problem, we're going to simplify a sum. Notice how there's a plus sign in between the parentheses. Okay, do not do a box for this. We're not multiplying, we are adding. And when we add, we just need to combine the like terms. Here we have 6x to the third minus 4x squared minus 7x to the fourth. And we want to add that with 8 minus 2x cubed plus 5x to the fourth. The first thing I'm going to do is take that first polynomial and rearrange the terms in standard form. The biggest exponent here is x to the fourth, so that term should come first, negative 7x to the fourth. Then the next biggest exponent is x cubed, so I'm going to put the 6x cubed next. And lastly, we have the minus 4x squared. Now, if we take our second polynomial and do the same thing, my biggest exponent is x to the fourth, so the 5x to the fourth is going to go right below the negative 7x to the fourth so that the like terms are lined up vertically. Then we have the negative 2x to the third, that's going to go right here. And then that 8 does not go with the 4x squared. 8 is a constant, so 8 is actually just going to be its own column. The constants always come last, so I'm going to put the 8 right there. And now we're ready to add them together. Since our terms are lined up, we can just add them vertically. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So I have negative 2x to the 4th. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. So now we have 4x cubed. The minus 4x squared does not have any other x squareds to go with it. So it's going to stay the same. Minus 4x squared. And then we have the plus 8 on the end. So this is our final answer. Remember that when you add polynomials together, the exponents do not change when you combine like terms. So do not add like 4 and 4 and say x to the 8th. When we add or subtract, our variables are going to be the same. We're just adding and subtracting the coefficients, which are the numbers in front of the variables. In number 21, we're going to switch over to subtraction. Notice there's a minus sign in the middle of the two parentheses. When you see a subtraction, we're going to change it to an addition problem by distributing the negative 1 to the second polynomial. That's the one after the minus, because it's like you're distributing a negative 1. And when you multiply numbers by negative 1, all of their signs are going to flip. So negative numbers will change to positive numbers, and positive numbers will change to negative numbers. So I'm just going to rewrite this second expression now as negative 8x cubed minus 8x minus 5x to the fourth. And now that we've distributed the negative 1, now it's an addition problem. So we can do it just like the previous question. Let's make sure, though, that we are writing the terms in standard form. So when I look at my first expression, the largest exponent is x to the fourth. So I'm going to put that first, 7x to the fourth. And then the next biggest exponent is 4x to the third, so that's going to come next. And then the minus 3 goes on the end. Now, one thing that I'm noticing right now is that I have an 8x right there, so I actually want to leave a gap for the x. So I'm going to just kind of insert 0x as a placeholder, and then I'm going to put the minus 3 on the end. I'm doing that just so when I line up the second polynomial, I have a spot to put the x term. Now, if we take the biggest exponent in the polynomial right here, remember I changed it to addition, so now it's a negative 5 x to the fourth. I'm going to line that up with my other x to the fourth. And then the negative 8 x cubed will line up with this x cubed. And the minus 8 x will go with the 0 x. 
because I left that extra place for it. And now we can go ahead and just add them together. 7 and negative 5 add to 2, so we have 2x to the 4th. 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4, so minus 4x cubed. 0 minus 8x is just negative 8x. And then we have the negative 3 on the end, and that is our final answer. The next thing we're going to move on to is multiplying polynomials. We learned how to multiply polynomials in the second half of Unit 6, Lesson 6, 4, and 6, 5. When we multiply polynomials, we have to remember the product of a power rule. That's an exponent rule that's listed right here. x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the m plus n. So our exponents are going to change. We add the exponents on the variables. There are two different ways that we can multiply. If you're multiplying a monomial, which has one term, with a polynomial, you can just use the distributive property. But if you're multiplying two binomials, that's two things that both have two terms, you'll need to use either box or foil. If you're multiplying a binomial and a trinomial, I recommend using the box. You can still use the foil pattern, but it gets kind of messy, so a box is going to be a little bit easier. In this problem right here, we're going to start off with just a monomial and a polynomial. Notice how there's just one thing here on the outside of the parentheses. When that's the case, we don't need to set up a box. We can just go right to the distributive property where we take everything inside the parentheses and we multiply it by 5x squared. When you do that, you're multiplying the numbers and you're using the exponent properties on the variables. So for example, five times two is just 10, just regular multiplication, but then I wanna add the exponents together for my variables. And I'm gonna actually write that out here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I have the next one is five times negative four, which is negative 20, and it's x to the, well, two and two, I'm gonna add those up. And then finally, 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. And then x to the second, this x is like an x to the first. So when we add the exponents, we'll have 2 plus 1. All right, and you can go straight to the answer. I'm just showing you in this video what I'm doing. So the numbers are going to stay the same. Those are just what I got when I multiplied, but I'm just going to add those exponents now. So we have 10x to the fifth and then minus 20 x to the fourth, and then minus 40 x to the third. And that is our final answer with the distributive property. In this next problem, we cannot use the distributive property because we have a binomial times a binomial. We have two things with two terms. You have two options for how you, can simp how you can do this problem. You can either do the box method or the FOIL method. In class, most students seem to prefer the box, so I'm going to start with that method. For the box method, you just make a square and you divide it into fours. And then we're going to put one binomial on the top of the box. I'm going to do the 3x plus 5 on top. And then on the side of the box, I'm going to put the 2x and the minus 7. Make sure you carry the signs with the numbers. So that's a 2x minus 7. I need to put a negative 7 on this box here. And now we just multiply the sides of our box together. So 2x times 3x for this first box is going to be 2 times 3 is 6, and x times x is x squared. Remember, it's like 1 and 1 makes 2. Then if we go to the next square, we're taking 2x times 5. 2 times 5 is 10, and there's no more x's, so it just stays as 10x. Then we move down to this row and take negative 7 times 3x, which is negative 21x. And finally, negative 7 times 5, which is negative 35. So those four terms there inside my box are the values of my product. The one thing we can do before we write our answer is we can put our like terms together. The like terms are the 10x and the negative 21x. So when we add those together, negative 21 plus 10 is negative 11. 
So this is negative 11x, and now my simplified answer is 6x squared minus 11x minus 35. So that's the box method. If you're one of the students who likes FOIL, I'll review that quick as well. FOIL is kind of just like distributing twice. So I'm going to start with 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared. Then 3x times negative 7, which is negative 21x. And then we do the same with the 5. 5 times the 2x is 10x. And 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. And what you're hopefully noticing here is the numbers I just got with FOIL are the same four numbers that we had in our four squares. Um, the middle terms there are my like terms, so I can put those together. So we end up with 6x squared minus 11x minus 35. You can use whatever method you like best. On problem 24, when we have a binomial times a trinomial, the FOIL pattern does work, but it gets kind of messy with that many terms. So I prefer the box method when I have a binomial times a trinomial, but instead of a square, this time I'm going to make more of a rectangle because I need one of them to be two across. So I'm going to put my binomial here and then the other to be three across like this. And now I'm going to put the 2x plus 3 on the short side of my rectangle and the 5x squared minus x plus 6 on the long side. If you want, you can draw in a 1 here. It's like a minus 1x. And now we go through and we multiply just like we did previously. For the first box, we need the 2x times the 5x squared. 2 times 5 is 10. And x times x squared is x cubed. Remember, we're totaling up the x's. Here's x to the first, here's x to the second. So 1 plus 2 makes the 3. In the next square, we're going to take 2x times negative 1x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and x times x is x squared. And then finally, I'm taking 2x times 6, and that's 12x. And now we'll move down to the bottom row. 3 multiplied by 5x squared is 15x squared. 3 times negative 1x is negative 3x. And lastly, 3 times 6 is 18. So when we look inside the rectangle now, there's actually two different sets of like terms. So if you want to circle both sets, you'll just have kind of two circles like this. And then I can put these x's together as well. So now... Um, Combining the x squareds, we have 15x squared minus 2x squared, which ends up being 13x squared. And then the negative 3x and the 12x, when we add negative 3 plus 12, that's make, that makes 9. So this is 9x. And now the other two terms that aren't part of the circles, they're just going to stay the same. So I have 10x to the third. And then it's positive 13x squared, so plus 13x squared, positive 9x, so plus 9x, and then we have the plus 18 on the end. And that right there would be our final answer. The last thing that we discussed in Unit 6 was multiplying special cases. There are two different special cases that we discussed. There's the square of a binomial, which just means we're taking a binomial times itself. If you want to use the formula, a plus b squared simplifies to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The other one that we'll do is the product of a conjugate pair. That's like a sum and a difference where the two factors look the same, but one has the plus sign in the middle and one has the minus sign in the middle. When we do that, we end up with just a squared minus b squared because the middle terms, when you have two factors that match, are going to cancel each other out. In this first example, we're going to simplify a square of a binomial. Now, you do not have to use this formula. For the square of a binomial, it just means the binomial times itself. Like 5n minus 7 squared really just means 5n minus 7 times 5n minus 7. 
So you can solve that with box or foil and that will give you the same answer. Most students I think prefer just to use box or foil, but if you wanna use the pattern, you can. So I'm gonna start with the pattern and then I'll do it with the box as well. Um, so here my A is 5N, and since I have a negative 7 and this is a plus B, I need to think of B as a negative 7. And if we follow our pattern, which is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, for the first term, we have A squared, which is 5N squared. Make sure you put parentheses around it when you're subbing in your values. Then 2 times A, which is 5N times b, which is negative 7, and then plus b squared on the end. When you're simplifying this, remember that squaring something means you're multiplying it by itself. So a 5n times a 5n makes 25n squared, and then 2 times 5 times negative 7 makes negative 70. So I have negative 70n as my middle term, and then negative 7 squared is just negative 7 times negative 7, which is a positive 49. So our final answer would be 25n squared minus 70n plus 49. You can also do this problem with box or foil. And most students, I think, find box or foil easier than using the rules, um, especially the box, just because it's so visual, it's so easy to see what's multiplying together. So if you do the box method for the square of a binomial, you just put... Um, both sides of the box as the same thing. It's 5n minus 7 times 5n minus 7. And if we do our calculations, we get 25n squared. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. So there's negative 35n. And then when we move down to the bottom row, we get negative 35n and then positive 49. So notice when I put these two together, the negative 35 and the negative 35 makes negative 70. So we have 25n squared minus 70n plus 49. Same answer whether you use the formula or the box. If you're good at the box method, I recommend just sticking with it. The last special case is the product of a conjugate pair. You can think of it as a sum and a difference where the two factors are going to be exactly the same. Like in this example, we have 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Now you can use the shortcut formula, which is right up here in your packet. And if we do that, our a term is 2x and our b term is 5. So the shortcut, since it's the product of a conjugate pair, is just a squared minus b squared. So that's 2x squared minus 5 squared. 2x squared, again, is 2x times 2x. So that's 4x squared. And then the 5 squared here is 5 times 5, which is 25. So we have 4x squared minus 25 as the final answer. Another way we can get our answer is by making a box or doing the FOIL method. I think most of you will probably prefer just to do a box for all of the multiplication problems. When you do your box, you just put the two binomials on the sides of your box, like I'm doing here. And then if we multiply our product, we get 4x squared plus 10x and then minus 10x here. And then 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. You'll notice when you make your box here that the 10x and the negative 10x combine to make a 0. So that term cancels out, and that's why we're left with 4x squared minus 25. And this concludes the Unit 6 portion of your final review packet. Thanks for watching. Bye.